Hi, um, today I'm still going to talk about some basic concept in linear algebra. So first of all, let's look at the four fundamental subspace of a matrix A. So uh, they are column space of A, node space of A, uh, row space of A, which is equivalent to the column space of A transpose, and then the node space of uh, tr A transpose. So uh, the dimension of the column space or the dimension of the row space is equal to the to the rank of matrix A. So uh, the rank of matrix A uh, is just um, how many pivot column uh, by looking into the row reduced echelon form of A. So in our examples, the rank of matrix A is two since there are two um, there are two um, pivot columns here. And then for uh, the dimension of row space, which is also the uh, we can also take a look at the uh, row reduced echelon from of a transpose and then we can also verify that there are two pivot columns so that um, So that the dimension of the column space is equal to the dimension of the row space And then it's also equal or, or defined as the rank of matrix a so in our case r equal to a So uh, if this matrix is a uh, is non square matrix for example in our case is m by m by n so three rows and four columns so the dimension of the node space of the matrix A is n minus r. So uh, if so, think about it. For uh, node space, it's just all the solution to a x equal to zero. So for uh, so x, there must be four um, um, component in x in order to to do the matrix calculation. Since uh, this is a three by four, and x is four by one, and then you will get a three by one as a as an output, which is the zero vector for the node space. So uh, there are four columns, and then there, um, and then there are two pivot columns. So that that means there are two uh, two columns with three variables. So the dimension of the node space is just uh, n minus r. So in our case, it's four columns. And then minus uh, two two columns that has pivot columns, and that means there are two uh, uh, there are two other columns with three variables, so it's n minus r, and then the same same logic for the node space of a transpose, which is just m minus r. So a x equal to zero. So x must have three variables, which is uh, which is uh, equivalent to the columns in here, which is the row in in the original matrix A. So that's a three. And then since the dimension of the row space and the column space are equal to r, so that uh, so the node space of the row matrix, uh, of the row um, of the uh, a transpose is just uh, m minus r. So in our case, it's three minus two equal to one. Okay, so uh, you can get uh, these numbers by looking at the row reduced echelon from of the same matrix. And uh, here is uh, some uh, some other concept in linear algebra. So the dot product of two orthogonal vector is zero. So um, so for example, uh, a x equal to zero. So x is the no space of the matrix A. So um, so uh, a is just the columns that can define uh, define the um, the column space. So uh, so a x equal to zero. So that uh, because of the dot product of two vector or two uh, matrix or, or just vector are equal to zero. So the row, the column space multiply. Um, so the row space, which is uh, each row multiplied by the x, is equal to zero. So that the row space of A is also orthogonal to the no space of A. So uh, that is another um, uh, uh, property. Of the of our fundamental sub a four fundamental subspace, so the row space of A, which is each row, uh, multiplied by the vector uh, by by x, so that row space is orthogonal to the node space of A, and and with the similar logic, so the column space, so A transpose x is equal to zero so that means uh, the column space of a multiplied by the no space of a transpose is equal to zero so that um, the column space of a is also orthogonal to the no space of trans uh, 
to the node space of a transpose. So uh, um, you can pause the video or to think about it. So ax equal to zero. That means uh, using the x, all the x equal to each row, so that um, the row space or the row space is just the the the, the space that is spanned by these. Um, actually, in our case, it's these two rows. So uh, any matrix, any column, any vectors that is uh, that can create it in by these by using these two vectors, and then multiply by that node space is equal to zero. So that's why. Uh, any column, any vector in this space is orthogonal to the node space, so that uh, row space of A is orthogonal to the node space of A, and then the column space of A is orthogonal to the node space of A transpose, because uh, we know that two orthogonal vector, their dot product is zero. Okay. So up to here, we're still talking about the properties, or um, about these four fundamental subspace. Okay, so now let's talk about some other um, um, solving linear system here. So uh, here we have an ax equal to b, but uh, it may not have a solution because uh, b can be b may not be in the column space of a. So that, um, however, it is possible to calculate a x hat equal to p, where p is the projection of b onto the column space of a, so that uh, p is in the column space of a. So that that means there must there there, there will be a solution, because uh, we are just doing a, um, a combination of all the columns of a. So if so if p, uh, b is not in the column space, so that means uh, there's no combination of the columns in a can uh, create. B. So that that that's why there's no solution. But if we project the column, the vector B onto the onto the um, um the the space, uh the column space of A, then uh the the vector B, the 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 formula A x uh A x hat equal to the projection ha must have a solution. So uh. Actually, I also have a visualization here, and let's uh, just to make uh, just I'm just trying to make the explanation uh, simpler, or to 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 help you to easy understand uh, uh, the 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 calculation here. So uh, think of a right triangle here. So we have a we have a right triangle here, and then uh, we have this. For example, this is called. So for example, this is the vector uh, b, and then since uh, and then we want to project this vector b onto this uh, onto this line, so that uh, this is called a projection of vector b onto. Um, Onto the line or the vector space, uh, uh, the column space A. So in our case, it's just a line. So we are trying to project uh, this uh, vector B onto this line, so that this uh, the arrow, uh, the vector zero three, will be the projection of this vector B here. Okay. So and um, um, so this is uh, vector B, and then this is uh, vector P, which stands for the projection. So b minus p is is the distance uh, between uh, the vector and the line. So in here we denoted uh, e, which is uh, b minus p. So that's the distance of uh, of the uh, of this line. So uh, e is stand for error. So that means the error from or the the distance between this vector to this line. So we know that the dot product of two orthogonal vectors should be zero. So that means uh, this vector multiplied by this vector should be zero. So uh, line A multiplied by this error is equal to zero. And then this error is that uh, P minus, uh, B minus P. Because uh, if you, so all the, uh, um, the sum of the vectors can be, uh, is like a, um, uh, so if you start from here, like uh, 
you draw this vector and then you have another vector here so the sum of this vector is just from the starting point to the last ending point so so that is e equivalent to 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 this vector here so that's why the so that is the the um, addition or the subtraction of the of uh, vectors so uh, here we have that e is defined by b minus p so we plug that in and then p is just a proportion of the matrix of of this line a so we just define uh, p equal to ax so x is the scalar and a is this line here so that the projection is always a always a portion of this line so we define p as ax here and now we just expand this and then we find the solution x is equal uh, x this is the formula for the x so notice again this at uh, the x is the scalar so because the projection is just uh, a portion of the line a so x times a is just a portion of the line a that is the length or that is the exact vector for the projection of the b onto this line here so now we have a formula to calculate the projection, which is uh, the line A multiplied by the scalar. So the portion of this line is, is, the, is the projection of the vector B. And here we have this um, E. Vector E is perpendicular to the column space of A. Or in our case, it's just line A, uh, this line here. So that... Uh, um so we also have this um x here so x is just a portion of the line a so we we so we put it back uh um uh to uh rewrite p into the ax ax hat because uh, that is our solution for the p so if we put ax hat to um ax hat is that and then keep expanding and then we'll get x hat is equal to a transpose b divided by a uh, transpose a so uh, if you are familiar with the with the um, uh, uh, regression or, uh, or or how to do regression in the matrix format or if you have seen a uh, my previous video talking about um, the uh, the linear regression, you will notice that this formula is very similar to calculate uh, the least square, which is uh, ex which is uh, exactly the formula to calculating the the um, to that can minimize the mis uh, the residual sum of square for uh, for doing uh, uh, linear regression. So that uh, that is uh, where um, how the formula come from. And then let's also doing the the uh, regression model uh, in the matrix format, so that this is also you can think of it as another uh, met another way to verify to validate um, the the formula or the concept from matrix to uh, linear regression. Okay. So we talk about the projection matrix or how 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 to calculate the projection. Of a, of a vector onto onto a, onto a subspace and then we also uh, we also uh, talk about um, the uh, the least square solution in the matrix format so, so feel free to pause the video and to, to take a look at the formula here or, or you, so that you can you can uh, also do it yourself and then we are going to talk about how to construct our orthonormal basis from uh, matrix A here so uh we don't need this b here so for example we have this matrix a so uh the matrix a uh, uh, i think it is uh all the columns are independent so these three uh, vectors or columns can uh can form a column space um but uh um this um but uh, the same column space can also be defined by some other by any of the three independent uh, vectors in the same uh, subspace. So in here we are going to talk about the orthonormal basis, where uh, we can use uh, three uh, three vectors or three columns 
that uh, that can define the same uh, subspace of uh, the column space of A, but um, they they have they have another uh, additional property, which is just uh, these three vectors are are, are ortho orthogonal to to each other. So that means their dot product is equal to zero. So uh, by constructing the orthonormal basis uh, in the future, uh, it will, it can be very helpful for lots of calculation. Um, so the orthonormal basis is also is also spanning the same and it's also uh, spanning the same uh, column space of the or original matrix A, but uh, they just have a property that they're three um, they're ortho orthogonal to each other. Okay. So now we are going to talk about the Grand uh, Grand Smith. Uh, method to construct um, the orthonormal basis of this matrix A here. So here, let's pull out the um, the three uh, in uh, the columns here, and then we just define our uh, Q1 is equal to the is equal to uh, to the first column. So that the second. Uh, so if this will is this if this is the first uh, orthonormal. Uh, basis the first uh, orthonormal basis in in the in the in the in the basis, then uh, we can we construct um, the orthonormal basis column by column. So our second basis is just the column two minus uh, the projection of uh, uh, column two onto Q one. So which is similar to this part. So if we want to find another. Um, um, uh, the another uh, uh, another uh, orthonormal vector that is uh, orthogonal to 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 our Q one here. Then we just use um, we just use the the vector the column two in in our case using the column two minus the minus the um, the um, the um, the let's say the projection. Onto the first subspace, and then we will get uh, the vector that is orthogonal to the first uh, subspace. So uh, here is so you can draw the picture and then to visual and then to 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 visualize that uh, to how how to get uh, how to get the orthonormal basis of uh, of two vectors that are not orthogonal into two orthogonal uh, bases. But uh, this is just the uh, I'm just applying to the formula here. So, uh, but it's similar to here that I uh, use one matrix, subtract that, and then you will get a vertical, and then you will get an orthogonal matrix to the to the Q one here. Okay, so uh, that's the first basis, and then that's the second basis. The third basis is just uh, subtracting the column, uh, the third column uh, project project onto the first uh, spaces, and then also subtract the third column project on the second basis. And then if you have Q4 and Q5 or, or or keep going on, just keep subtracting their projection onto the onto all the previous spaces, so that you will get uh, the uh, then um, uh, uh, um, i plus one vector that is orthogonal to all the previous uh, bases. So here in our case, we only have three vectors, so that is so we only need to do subtraction twice to get all three bases. And now we can also verify that Q1. Um, uh, multiply our uh, dot product multiplied by the q2 is that uh, zero so this is a very small number to the uh, 10 to the negative 15 uh, power so that is uh, very close to zero so that is just to verify that uh, all these three vectors are orthogonal to each other so they are not yet orthonormal because they are not uniform they are not uh, nor they haven't uh, been uh, normalized in order to normalize the vector, you just need to divide it by the by the length of the of, of the vector itself. So now here we we can also uh, check. So they're still again they're still uh, orthogonal to each other, and since we divide it by their length, so that now they are they are normalized. So if you if we take a look at the vector here, we can see that these are the um, the orthonormal basis. They are, e they are either uh, um, are orthonormal with each other, and then they are also in the unique length. So that all the length, uh, um, we can uh, check. Yeah. 
So they have length of one uh, of each matrix. So this is called the orthonormal basis of the co of the um, column space of A. So uh, so that here we construct uh, the matrix. So um, the the orthonormal basis has one of uh, has another um, uh, advantage for uh, for calculation and uh, in, in, in so the, the next thing I want to talk about is the called the QR factorization. So in the previous video, I think I talked about the LU factorization where uh, U is the upper triangle and L record the, the the elimination steps and then taking the inverse to the to the right hand side and then you get A equal to L U. So in this case, uh, in today's example, I'm going to talk about the QR factorization, where Q is just the, the orthonormal basis that we just construct earlier. And then uh, so uh, and uh, and then uh, and then now we just so since we have uh, the a and then we have the q that we that we use the Grant Smith's uh, method to calculate the orthonormal basis. Now we just need to calculate the um, the r, which is our upper triangular uh, matrix here. So we multiply by the q transpose on the both hand side, and then r is uh, and uh, since there uh, since uh, because of the unit vector, uh, and uh, and also there are um, and also they are uh, orthogonal to each other. So Q transpose Q is actually the uh, identity matrix here. So uh, we can, let's verify. Um, um, oh, yeah. so we need to do a matrix uh, calculation. So as you can see that uh, Q transpose Q. So uh, on the diagonal is just one, one, and one. And then on the, the off diagonal elements are all uh, very small values, so they should be zero. So but uh, in, in the calculation it just uh, they're just extremely small value. But as you can see, this is an identity uh, identity uh, matrix here. So Q transpose Q is identity. So the right hand side is left with R. So uh, in order to get the R, it's just the uh, Q transpose A. So by doing that, we'll get an upper triangular matrix. So uh, you can see that, uh, again, these three values are uh, extremely small value, which is close to zero. So you can consider them as zero. And then this is the upper triangular matrix. So we can do this factorization for A, which is called a QR factorization. So uh, there are some benefit to doing this uh, QR factorization in the in the uh, if you are if you want to learn more about uh, in the linear model and then uh, linear uh, algebra, uh, the QR factorization has some other advantage for uh, for advanced uh, calculation. But uh, here, just to to so today, I'm just going to talk about how to construct the the Q, and then how to uh, how to uh, then calculate the R uh, for the QR factorization. And then uh, we have, uh, and then this is just a small thing about how to do the um, uh, projection and the reflection of a matrix uh, uh, corresponding to one line. So again, here I'm still going to use um, um, the visualization I have here. So, uh, so for example, here I have this. Uh, um, this column V here, which is uh, you can read from the coordinates, so just uh, two, three here, and then I have this uh, this line here, is, uh, and then this factor is uh, zero. Um, actually, it's zero six. Okay, so here again, I'm using the formula that we derive from uh, from here, which is the projection, and then we use the projection matrix the calculation. And then calculate. Uh, so now I'm trying to find uh, the projection of v onto the onto 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 the, this line or onto this vector here. So now, um, let's take a look on the projection. 
So by using the formula here, you can pause the video and, and then to, to verify or to take a look on the, on the calculation and then how we get the, the formula uh, for, for, for this one here. So uh, now uh, what, this uh, what this equation is doing is that to calculate the projection uh, vector for this vector v onto this vector uh, w here. So that we can see that uh, for vector 2, 3, and then project onto the uh, onto the vector zero six, and then we get um, zero three here. So zero three is just the projection uh, of this vector onto this line here. And then the reflection is two times projection minus v. So that is uh, let's take a look. So the reflection is of this uh, vector v two three is that negative 2 and then uh, 3 here so that we get our refraction here. so we can uh, let's plot um, the reflection here so 0 0 uh, 0 0 negative 2 and So here, so um, uh, I I I uh, do the calculation to get this uh, formula uh, uh, and above, so you can go back and to take a look how to get this. One. And now I'm just going to talk about how to get the refraction here. So after we get the projection, which is uh, zero three, so two times, so twice the projection vector is just uh, here, so that's zero six. And because of you are doing the refraction, uh, you will go. We will do. Uh, you will create an equilateral uh, triangle here, so that um, these two uh, lengths are the same, so that you can do twice the um, the projection vector, and then minus uh, uh, vector v, which is um, which is just moving this vector over here. So twice the projection minus the vector v, and then you will get this vector here. So that uh, the refraction is uh, negative two and three. So that is how you can calculate the projection of a vector onto a onto a, a column space, which is uh, this part, or onto a line. And also, you can get a refraction of the vector over uh, uh, across a line, which is just the mirror mirror image here. So. Uh, I have talked about some property of the fundamental subspace uh, of a matrix, and then also talk about uh, slightly talk uh, briefly talking about the least squares, which is uh, very important in the statistic modeling, and also how to construct the uh, orthonormal basis. And here I also have the QR factorization, and then I talk about to how to find the projection and the refraction of a of a vector. So uh, thank you very much and let me know if you have uh, any questions.